I fully acknowledge that the topic of work stories has been covered by every single person who owns a computer and has ever been employed. My justification for making this video is that my stories aren't explicitly about customers or coworkers like many of the other ones are, and also that my job is a little bit strange. I work at a medieval themed dinner theater place that I won't say the name of for a number of reasons. It's part of a chain that's located throughout the United States and Canada. When you go there, you sit in an arena that holds up to about 1,400 people and you're put into the section of one of the six knights. You cheer on your knight as he competes in medieval games and then later jousts to the death, all while riding real horses. This is all strung together with a plot progressed by three speaking characters, and the dinner part of the dinner theater comes in as you're being served a meal that you eat entirely without utensils. Now, as I'm sure you can imagine, any number of things can go wrong in a show like this, from actors forgetting their lines, to horses freaking out, to the the wrong sound cue being played to a group of 300 showing up 20 minutes late. Now I've seen all this and more, but things don't stray from the norm all that often so we can be pretty thrown off when things do go horribly wrong. But nothing rustled everyone's jimmies quite like the time the power went out in the middle of the jousts. Wait, how would the power going out have any impact on a medieval theater experience, you might ask? And the answer is don't worry about it. In any case, the show relies heavily on music cues, spotlights, and microphones, so it was quite chaotic when everything suddenly went dark and quiet. Many of the employees, and especially the managers, scrambled to find a solution. I was sure that they were going to send home the several hundred people in the audience. Before long, the generators kicked on and so did the emergency lights and we were no longer plunged in period accurate darkness. Now, the ceiling lights aren't normally on during the show, so interestingly enough, it was actually brighter in the arena than it would have normally been at this point. But the sound and lighting equipment still wasn't going to work without full power. Amidst the scramble, one of the squires found a megaphone that the Master of Ceremonies would be able to use. At this point in the show, he was the only one that had any substantial lines, and all he had to do was announce the upcoming fights. This solution did seem feasible, and at last, the unlikely decision was made that the show must go on. With the emergency lights on, the fights being announced through a megaphone, and a distinct lack of background music and sounds, the tournament was completed as close to period accurate as I've ever seen it. And on that topic, what was I doing during all of this? I was playing trumpet calls with my buddy Brett without the assistance of microphones. I mean, technically there were microphones, but like the power was out, so it didn't work. He and I are obviously trumpeters, which is less cool than being a knight, but more cool than being a man wench. Our job is a strange combination of live musical performance, food service, acting, and customer relations, among other things. There's typically about six of us in total at any given time, but there's only two of us on each show. We're technically a part of the show cast, so we spend most of our time with the actors, and our job is really easy as long as you already know how to play a trumpet. Although throughout the course of a four hour shift, we spend less than two and a half minutes of it in total actually playing. So what do we do with the rest of that time? We spend most of our time sitting backstage waiting for cues to go play a trumpet call or to do one of our other various tasks. The backstage is a very small room and during the show when the ceiling lights are off, it's completely dark except for the rope lights that we have back there to set the mood. Or maybe they're just so we can see. It's just two bros, Chillin' in a dark room, five feet apart, cause that's about how much space there is. And this is incidentally where Brett and I were when the power went out. We were just sitting there like usual, and for some reason Brett decided to knock on the wall. When he did this, the lights kind of flickered, so with his newfound power he decided to knock a second time, and that time the lights went out completely. Now for just a moment he thought that he was the one that caused the power outage, and I'll never forget the look on his face for that split second. That whole thing was just weirdly cinematic for something that actually happened in real life. But in any case, when we're not upsetting the power grid, what do we do with all that time backstage? The general manager, the true ruler of the castle, made a royal decree banning the use of cell phones by all clocked-in employees who weren't managers or security staff. This means that we have to pass the time using truly medieval methods. Sometimes we do homework or read or do a page in the 2010 Sudoku daily calendar. Sometimes we even talk to each other. We're also there for the part before the show and before they open the doors to the arena where the guests are hanging around in this room called the Hall of Arms where there's a gift shop and some other stuff to do. 20 minutes before the show time, there's a big ceremony where everyone is led into the arena and the MC explains all the rules like how you can't vape inside the castle. While standing on top of the gift shop with him, we play a call before he starts talking and another one when he announces that the doors will be opened. Since this is before the show itself and there are no sound cues that we have to follow, we can kind of pick what calls we want to play. This does require both of us to agree on what we're going to play and then stick to it, though. Since entertaining things tend to happen when Brett's around, on one occasion he and I had agreed on the calls that we were going to play to open the doors to let in a crowd of about a thousand people. There was nothing particularly special about this show, and we played our first call without incident. The Master of Ceremonies, who was played by our manager on this particular show, by the way, finished the first part of his speech, and then it was supposed to go like this. Royal Trumpeters, summon the serfs and wenches to open the doors to the Grand Arena. 
but here's what really happened. Royal trumpeters summoned the serfs and wenches to open the doors to the Grand Arena. <laughs> Now, it's pretty common that we make mistakes, and they're usually pretty small ones that people who aren't musicians either wouldn't notice or wouldn't bring up later. But this time, every single one of those thousand guests and employees below us knew that something had gone wrong. When a call goes particularly poorly, our manager will usually talk to us about it later and try to figure out what happened and see what we can do to fix it. But that time, when we saw him later, he just kind of gave us a look and then didn't bring it up. He knew that we knew. If you couldn't tell quite what went wrong there, what happened was that Brett had played the call that we had agreed to do, but my brain decided to play a completely different one. When we started playing, we both realized that the other person was just playing something different, so we both probably panicked for a moment and then just kind of trailed off. We later called this incident Ian the Falconer, which is a combination of the two names of the calls that he and I played at once. Now I'd love to tell you that from this experience I grew as a person and learned from my mistakes, but much like the League of Nations, I let it happen again. At some later point, as we're putting our horns up to play the second call during Call the Table, Brett goes, Ian the Falconer. This was enough to cause me a moment of panic in which I played the wrong call again, resulting in the same outcome. So has the embarrassment from screwing up my one job on multiple occasions in front of thousands of strangers and tens of my coworkers urged me to learn from my mistakes and grow as a person in order to be able to do better in the future? Probably not. I put up this screen at the end of my last video because it's essentially what the storytime animators do and I didn't have any other ideas at the time. But since then I've thought of something else I could do here. Long before I start actually making these videos, I think of what stories I want to tell next and then I also think about what they would look like. From there I do some quick early sketches on paper just to figure out what the layout of some of the frames will be. So now what I think I'm going to do is at the end of each video I'm going to show you the drawings for the next video. Now I'm not going to explain the drawings at all, I'm just going to show them to you and then you can see if you can figure out what's going on in them. So before this video I might have shown you this drawing, or maybe this one. Here's an example of one where the final product is worse than the original sketch. For my first video I might have shown you this, but here are the ones for what the next video is going to be. Ooh, what could possibly be going on here? I guess you'll just have to wait. And in a week I'm going to Europe for a month, so it really will be a while before this one comes out. But in any case, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please like and subscribe and share with your friends to help me appease the algorithm. And right now I've got one other video up on my channel, and if you're watching in the future there might be many more, so please take a look at those too. Oh, and I recorded those parts where the trumpets were playing. Those obviously weren't actual recordings from work, that was just me recreating what happened. I had Brett listen to the E and the Falconer part, and he confirmed that it was a historically accurate portrayal. It does seem like recording an instrument is a little bit different from recording voice, so I'm sure I'll get better at that too over time, and the trumpet parts will sound better in future videos. And of course, be sure to oil your valves.